everyone, welcome back to River's Edge Chef. I'm Astria, and today I am going to do the first part of making pinto bean soup. Um, now, tomorrow my mom will take it over because she is actually the person who does 99% of the cooking in this household. Um, but she's not here right now, and we wanted to get a pot of beans on to soak. And that is the first step, is we go through, and in this bowl I have eight cups of pinto beans. And pinto beans are a really good source of food. They have lots of fiber, they have iron, magnesium, potassium. They have lots of good stuff in them. Um, and they're super easy to cook. Now we're gonna do up a big batch of them so that we can put most of them in the freezer. But we like to be able to have containers of them frozen in the freezer. We pull them out, we have them refried with uh, eggs in the morning, we have them on top of salads, it's just, it's a nice way of having beans that are easy to get to, that you don't have to can, um, or make fresh all the time, and you're not buying at the store. So, I'm going to quickly take these, and you want to rinse your beans, so I'm going to fill this up with cold water. So I have cold water in the bowl, and I'm going to swoosh them around in here. And you're doing this to make sure because the beans are grown outside and they're harvested with machines. So they can pick up little stones, they can uh, have little bits of the, the bean plant themselves, and they ha might have a little bit of dirt in them. See, And you want to be looking for anything that shouldn't be in there. Um, these beans, they look pretty good. And also anything that floats, and there isn't any floaters in here. And you can see that the water is definitely uh, dirty. I'm hoping you can see this. Um, but it's, it's not super dirty. Now I'm gonna cover these um, beans probably with a good two inches of water because soaking them like this overnight allows the cooking to take a much less time. Um, it softens the beans up. It does half the, the work, basically, um, without having to heat your house up during summer, and also just not having to worry about stirring and cooking and making sure they're not burning. So um, I'll cover it with at least two inches of water, and then we'll check on it uh, throughout the evening just to make sure that they haven't poofed up so much that they're out of the water, because you want to make sure that they're covered with water. And I'm just using cold water. Okay, so I just got a phone call, um, so I put a pause on the video. Anyway, so I have the beans in here, eight cups of beans, and then I covered it with water, cold water, um, two inches above it pop the lid on and now it'll just sit on the counter overnight and then we will be back tomorrow well my mom will be back tomorrow to finish this up and uh, tell you everything she puts in it to make it absolutely delicious <clears throat> hi there so I am finishing up um, the rest of Astria's start on the pinto beans here um, I can't tip it too far forward because it's already been drained they were soaked overnight and then the soaking water was drained off and then uh, I added fresh water to it so that it's covered by about mm, a couple of inches of water on here. Now remember that there were eight cups of pinto beans in this pot uh, when we started out and now they've definitely puffed up a lot. They've gotten nice and full. Anyway, <clears throat> when I was growing up there was always a pot of pinto beans on the stove and a pot of rice. And when we'd come home from school, we always had a bowl of pinto beans with rice over it. And it's a great thing to keep you from starving to death when you've been at school all day. And um, it's a really good filling thing. But also, it's a complete protein when you combine the beans and the rice together. So anyway, so we've got the eight cups of soaked beans. 
that have had water replaced to it. I've got a full yellow onion here that's been roughly diced up. I'm going to add that to the water and the beans. And I have about a half a cup of garlic here, that's just like, you know, sliced up garlic. And a good pinch of salt, which might be about two teaspoons full just to start. Now there's some controversy over whether or not you're going to put salt on your beans when you first start cooking them or after they've been cooked. It doesn't matter, honestly. It just doesn't matter. I've done it both ways because of the controversy and it doesn't do a darn thing. Anyway, and then we also have some uh, rendered bacon ends here. Um, I like to use bacon ends rather than uh, ham hocks. I'm not real, a real fan of ham hocks because of all the little bones in them. But bacon ends, rather than just straight bacon, actually is a really nice thing to add because um, the fat to meat ratio in it is really good because when you're making a really good pot of beans you want quite a bit of bacon fat in it and this works out really well because <clears throat> with a, a pot of beans this size you can freeze them in containers, you can bring them out, you can make some of them into refried beans, you can add them to salads, you can put, you know, do anything you want with them, make them into chili but, or have a huevos rancheros. But anyway, we always use bacon ends that have been rendered down, you know, fried down, not totally crisp but about halfway there. <clears throat> so I'm going to add those into the beans and then we're going to put them on the stove and if your beans aren't really aged out, you know, normally if you go to a store that has beans that are being processed through selling out pretty quickly, it'll only take about 45 to 50 minutes for them to cook normally, um, probably no more than an hour, but if you let them cook longer they're going to cook down and get a lot softer and they'll be really nice. So anyway, you just want to keep an eye on it when they're cooking to see when they're done because it actually depends on how old the beans are. Most beans are going to be close to a year old I would guess because they have to go through the process of being harvested, stored, and then hit the marketplace. So um, I think that if your beans are a year or less old you're going to find that they cook really pretty quickly. Anyway, I'm going to get these on the stove to get them cooked and then um, after that we'll show you how they turn out. Okay so these are the beans and they've been cooked down. They've only cooked for about an hour and ten minutes or so but you can see that the beans are breaking down now. They're real soft. Um, this still needs to have a little more seasoning. It's not quite salty enough. And with the beans, you know, if you want to punch up the flavor more you can use like chicken drippings from a roast chicken or meat, any kind of meat pretty much will work for the drippings. Or you can even add like a bouillon to it like the um, better than bouillon um, paste that you can get from Costco. But anything to just bring up more flavor for it because the more flavor you develop in your uh, bean soup means the better it's going to be later on. Anyway, this is your pinot bean soup and it will eventually turn into many other things for us. We're going to put a lot of this in the freezer. And here is the finished product. So we have a salad here with avocados and tomatoes and beans. Lots of good stuff.